It's only entertainment. Welcome back to the Talking Hedge. Today we've got a couple of guests. Before we bring them on, we're going to do a little bit of intro on AI and cannabis, how the cannabis industry might be in using artificial intelligence. And so with that, let's dive into it. So there's a lot of different ways you can use it. You guys may have heard about ChatGPT. I'm going to just briefly kind of show you guys a little bit of an example on how to use it. All right. So if you haven't heard of ChatGPT, you get there by going to openai.com. There's a little product up here and you hit that chat GPT. Once you get there, it's, it's kind of similar to um, Google. Instead of it, it, putting something in Google and asking for a list of stuff for you to do your research, maybe you just want a quick answer. So for me, I wanted to know if the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, requires um, any kind of... Uh, if, 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 they, if it's online only robo advisor that I have, is it okay to have social media accounts? And then it'll tell you. So it's, it's searching through the internet, giving you a response. Um, and so that's with ChatGPT. And there's another cool one called Bard. Bard is owned by Google. So you can go to bard.google.com. I'm going to go through a real quick example of how I, I might use it. Um, looking at an example from this article on Tilray and Hexo, I can just grab the URL and find out a little bit more. So I could say learn colon, put in that URL and it's going to kick out and tell me a little bit about the article. All right. So I've got some things that I can use on like a podcast, for example. So after I, I put the information in there for the URL, I can have it come back and say, well, create a summary for me. So you can summarize articles and make that a great social media tool. You can create some short descriptions as well, engaging for social media, SEO keyword friendly, ideal for social media. So as it's giving me the short description, then I can get some more information that I can just plug in real quick. Maybe I wanna get an engaging tweet. Create an engaging social media tweet, including relevant hashtags, incorporate keywords, ideal for social media. So this is how I might use it after this podcast, for example. I might have it summarize it and give me all my social media. That's typically what I do. A lot of different ways. This is just one example from an article that you can extract information from. If you're too busy, you want to summarize things. We're going to bring in a couple of guests. We're going to find out how they're using it and maybe give you some more in-depth examples. Joe Azevedo, founder of Total Packaging Copper Bags. Total Packaged copper bags are a new type of packaging that uses copper infused polymer to prevent oxidization and microbial growth, keeping cannabis products fresh and flavorful for over a year. Recyclable, reusable, smell proof, sealable, antimicrobial, static free, and UV resistant. Joe, thanks for being on the Talking Hedge. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Josh. Yeah, appreciate it. So I just kind of went through um, a, a really um, shaky example of what ChatGPT is, how to use it. Are you using AI at all in, in personal prof or professional? Yeah, I use it a little bit in both, actually. You know, when I first started using AI, I work with music a little bit, too. So I'm a DJ and producer. And that's the first time I used AI was a program called Deezer that allows you to split up tracks knock out vocals and turn a track into an instrumental or isolate the vocals and be able to use that for something else. When ChatGPT came out just about well, a little over six months ago, I think now, um, it's been hugely beneficial for my business on multiple levels. So um, lots of examples on how somebody can do that uh, for people that are listening right now. One of the most effective ways is you can um, take your bio on LinkedIn or wherever it is and drop it into chat gpt and you can ask it to make it more professional make it more laid back uh, gear it towards your industry and each of those prompts will give you different information if it's a little lengthy you can just say shorten this or condense it if it's not quite long enough you can ask them to expand on it and it's never really a hundred percent accurate i've found find that it's about 95 percent accurate so a lot of people are worried about this taking away everybody's jobs. I think it's more about working in conjunction with it because it gives you a lot of ideas. You having the knowledge that you have can adjust it grammatically to make sure it says what you want it to say because it is a computer at the end of the day. 
but there's a long list of things that you can do with it. You know, you can have it write you a brand story based on your URL, which is pretty fascinating to be able to do because it speaks mm -hmm. almost as good as I would about my product, but it's able to come up with it in about 30 seconds with something that's very usable. And then if you wanted to do a deep dive on any of the things that your product does, like, for instance, our products are sustainable because they're reusable and recyclable. If you want to look at how plastic has affected the hemp industry, you can put that in there. Give me 10 ways that it's affected the hemp industry. And um, that is something that it'll come up. It'll talk about the pounds of, of waste that are in the ocean or um, a lot of different variables. Um, also, our bags are antimicrobial. There's a lot of talk around this aspergillus stuff. There's a way to be able to do a deep dive into that as well. And um, there's, you know, anything that you do, our, our bags are recyclable. They're antimicrobial. They're anti-static. You can put into chat GPT, a list me 10 ways that static affects cannabis. Uh, the biggest one is that it rips the trichromes off of your flower and sticks them to the bag. Since our bags are anti-static, that doesn't happen when you're using our bags. Um, but it kind of can give you a list of different marketing perspectives to be able to use in your everyday life. And yeah, let's give them an example. Let's do just that, Joe. Let's let's throw that into an analysis real quick uh, before we bring on our, our next guest, Jason. Okay. Um, you gave me this this little cheat sheet, though, and I really like that. So somebody's I can't share this really. So somebody's going to have to take a screenshot of this. So go ahead and pause the video if you guys are watching. Uh, and take a screenshot uh, of this here as I move on to showing you how to use these prompts to create exactly what Joe just mentioned, kind of a competitive analysis, if you will. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm going to put in here that I want ChatGPT to act like an analysis auditor. I want them to form an analysis of the the Talking Hedge podcast. And then my my top competitors. So then I need you to assess the differences and similarities between my brand and the competitors, bringing the key similarities and differences, present all the information and report this in charts, graphs, tables, and give my brand, you know, basically a competitive market analysis. Boom. Enter that. See what happens. Hopefully it's having a good day because like you mentioned, Joe, sometimes ChatGPT has, has its issues. It's not always going to give you the same thing day to day. So it's going to perform a competitive analysis based on the steps of pricing, marketing position, branding, messaging. Um, these are things that you may already know, but it may come from a different angle and give you a different perspective. Just like you mentioned, Joe, like these things yeah. are, are not like rocket science, but sometimes it just gives you a different perspective, right? So based on the analysis, I can identify areas of improvement and actionable steps to enhance your brand's competitiveness, all those things. So there's really a ton of things um, that you can do. So without further ado, maybe we can bring in our next guest and just chat in generalities about how they're using AI and how um, artificial intelligence is going to be incorporated in the cannabis space in general. All right. So we're bringing in Jason Webb, president of Beyond Safe Products. They provide a high quality USDA organic product for cl uh, cleaning as well as farming to help reduce the presence of toxic chemicals, chemicals in our ecosystem. Jason, thanks for being on the Talking Hedge. Great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Joe, which is, are you using artificial intelligence? If so, how and what capacity? Yes, so um, I'm fairly new to artificial intelligence, but for me, it immediately had an impact on everything that we're doing around here um, uh, in the sense of, you know, creating sales contracts, um, looking up information that normally takes someone like me who's not necessarily computer literate a lot longer. And um, it also immediately had an impact on our time uh, in the sense of things that normally would take a person like me a couple of hours to do. I am finding the information, tracking it down, being able to put it in language that uh, everybody is going to understand. And yes, I did notice the like 95% of the language that it presents to me is um, you know, it just needs a tiny bit of editing, but it just makes things 
faster. Um, when it comes to Googling, you know, I'm going from website to website to website and, you know, uh, the chat GPT is just immediately, um, you know, narrowing that down to just a few minutes. So it's yeah, I will say there's one disadvantage to that is that when you when um, when we want to do our own research, uh, it's, it's been kind of thrown out in the media that that's this right wing conspiracy thing where if you do your own research, you you must be a wacko. You should just take what we're saying and not question it at all. And I feel like that's really what ChatGPT is getting down to. And it is biased, incredibly uh -huh. biased. Uh -huh. And so I, I um, would definitely highlight the fact that be careful about convenience because the road to hell is always paved with good intentions that's right and when they just give you one answer and one solution man question everything like joe said it's only 90 percent accurate at best mm -hmm. but it's a very dangerous slippery slope just to take this at face value so although there is a massive amount of convenience i will say that you should um maybe not get too comfortable with that <laughs> well sure you know in in that sense um uh, <clears throat> I still do research, you know, yeah. um, but uh, I'm just saying when it comes to writing up a, a contract or, you know, you know, looking up, for instance, the BRICS count, you know, um, I wanted to see what, you know, Chad GPT had to say about that. And mm. I was finding a lot of similarities on the other different things. I don't know if there's a lot of elbow room for them to become biased in that area for anybody that's experienced or has any knowledge when it comes to things like the internal sugar count of a plant. Um, but yeah, that's actually, um, I didn't even consider that, uh, the fact that it may be a biased situation with um, the artificial intelligence. It's, yeah. it's very new. It's new and exciting. Everyone's jumping in. Yeah. I, I did yeah. see an article today that usage is dropping off, and I wonder if it's because of the inconsistencies with it, right? Just like with cannabis, if we don't, if we can't go to the store and get our consistency every time, uh, people will maybe go elsewhere. And so now that there's a lot of these other AI tools, I already mentioned Bard, which is a competitor. A hundred million dollars was thrown into the ring from Amazon. They're going to create their own. Um, and so Elon Musk started ChatGPT, but since it's no longer um, open source and they're charging for premiums, he's like, I'm out. I'm going to create my own and it's going to be free. So maybe it's dropping off because every day you put it in and says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't um, I can't do that for you today. I mean, and it's like you just did it for me two minutes ago. Right. And, and so there's th there's those issues. Um, and so maybe. Um, Maybe that's why. But I still find it interesting. I still am on there like basically every day. Um, so let's kind of go through maybe another example. You guys had already both mentioned some of these the, the things you could do with social media. Jason, you mentioned um, contracts. I, I use that a lot for pitch decks and contracts all the time. I, I think it's going to save a ton of people time. So let's provide um, suggestions for my Facebook. We're going to do a professional style and uh to improve what, what kind of results do we want to improve likes sure i want the post to be creative unique and have some fun with it i'll paste these in here down below so you guys can copy and paste these so check the comment on youtube i don't know wh where you guys are seeing this but go to my youtube page and you'll see this uh, listed there i would probably try a new chat and redo this because i think what it's doing is grabbing my old prompt um, and so the accuracy is not quite there. It is kind of interesting. I'll, I'll have it do some finance stuff for me and it's completely wrong answers. So math is not its great suit, but there are, um, there are extensions. And so I won't get too much into extensions in this podcast, but I, I think just like when the iPhone came out, it was neat, but what was really, really cool were the apps. The apps. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what you're going to start to see is the the extensions into ChatGPT creating those apps is going to be really, really cool. So I can only wait for the music. I was messing around. Um, Joe, I know music is your, your side hobby and, and, and passion. Yep. And I, I was working on this side project for a children's animated series using all AI for the, the animation, um, all that stuff, just to do proof of concept. And it was amazing. But the thing that was lacking, ironically enough, was singing. So, like, to your point, Joe, it's not going to replace humans at all. Right, so right. Even though, like, it can create lyrics and it can create beats, 
it doesn't know how to do all of that very well yet. So you're still going to need humans. I've posted 11 books on Amazon using all AI. Oh, wow. I, I could tell you it's not easy. People will stop. My, my wife tried to publish just a, 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 a journal and she, she stopped because it, it's not that easy. There are roadblocks and there's things in the way that are tedious as hell. And you're like, I don't want to keep doing this. It's way too tedious. So AI is neat. It's a great source to, like Jason said, create um, contracts and pitch decks. Oh, my God. There's a really cool pitch deck. And I'm not going to tell you in this podcast what it is. You're going to have to come back for another one. Um, But there's an amazing automated pitch deck solution that I've found. I'm really excited about it. And I think it's going to completely change the game. It's a $10,000 pitch deck, like instantly. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I would charge 10 grand for those all day long. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, basically like a personal assistant in a lot of ways, you know, um, it can get you around a lot of things that you can't do yourself or through your networks. You can ask it to give you a 10 point marketing plan based on your URL. And it'll go through your whole website and then give you a marketing plan based on that. So a lot of things that you can do with sales emails. It can write you sales emails. It can give you taglines, subject lines that are more uh, likely to be open and that are creative. And so it gives a little twist on things. And uh, like we said earlier, it's kind of just a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I noticed too with the... Uh... I saw some stuff with AI where uh, there was a post and it showed me a bunch of different art and it was, you know, you know, um, the AI you know, art is art. pretty art. Cool. So, so some of it was cool, but like, for instance, you know, like there was a bunch of pictures, different pictures of, of Jerry Garcia and they were just quite not like anybody would actually do, you know, they were close, but it was kind of evident to me that that was not somebody that's familiar with, you know, with, with what Jerry really looks like or would be things he would be doing, you know? So there's mid journey is a, is a great AI tool that, that I'm using for my thumbnails, but to your point, Jason, um, mid journey and a lot of these other ones aren't exact. So I just posted one, um, with an AI image of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden sniffing a whole bunch of cocaine. And it's not quite exactly their face, but you know, you could see them and you're like, yeah, that's, that's Hunter and Joe Biden, but obviously like not real. Um, But, but it is, it's good. I I don't think you're going to have like the deep fakes out of that yet. There's, there's probably better programs for that, but um, I like it. It, it, It's much more demanding on prompts the the mid journey you have to be really really good at prompts whereas the chat gpt and bard you can just you know put in anything in there and you'll get something decent out it's much much more complicated to get the finished product out of out of a uh, mid journey from from my experience yes and well so like videos for marketing you know uh where it's not s- such about a specific person you know, like those kind of things have instantly become a part of what we're doing. You know, um, as we learn, um, you know, um, I don't know how much it'll benefit me in the company, but we do already see, you know, these, um, you know, at the very beginning, you know, it's going to save us money because there's a lot of time that especially with a new business that we just don't have. And Mm -hmm. so we are able to get, it's that last 10% that you have to put the effort into, which is fine because we're saving 90%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump into where it's going to lead us to. Um, We've got a few minutes left. I I see the crystal ball prediction for AI being um, more of an assistant. So there's, there's tons of, of jobs that have already been laid off. Um, good thing, bad thing, you know, instead of laying off, maybe they can reallocate that human capital into more roles to generate revenue, whether that's sales or ideation or, or otherwise. So I, I look at it as you know, maybe eventually we're going to have digital assistants and I'm already looking at tools to, so I run a hedge fund that uses all AI. So we're using fully automated algorithms to buy and sell stocks, crypto, futures, everything. 
um, seven years in a row without a single monthly trading loss, which upset me hearing that Goldman Sachs didn't lose any money for five years. And I was pissed and I never I stopped investing for like 10 years until I met my business partner. I'm like, let's do this. You know, sick of standing on the sidelines. Let's just do this and, and bring Wall Street technology to the main street. And that's what we're doing with uh, Tor Alerts is offering that technology to everybody. So I think there's opportunities for it. I think um, with digital assistance, we'll be able to get more done and delegate. And so what I'm trying to do is do a fully automated um, solution, very much like a macro or a VBA, where in Excel, you can get it to do six to 10 or however many steps and automate all of those steps. So what I showed you earlier of copying the link and then asking it to give me 10 um, uh, hashtags and 10 things, you could just... Um, there's programs out there and hopefully we'll get to them in a few more weeks as we do this AI and cannabis series. And I'll show you how to implement that towards the very end and get a fully automated system to completion so that you don't have to go through those individual steps. That's my prediction. What are you guys predicting? Well, <clears throat> predicting, uh, anything about AI, I would be definitely premature. I'm not going <laughs> to hold you to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I hope that it, you know, does eventually get to a place where that extra 10%, you know, I mean, I think there's always going to need to be a cross referencing, you know, even if you're cross referencing different AIs that are biased to either side, because there's, you know, different sides with, you know, everything. So or grammarly for uh, make sure that it's not uh, plagiarizing. Right, right. Um, which, like I said, so far so good in the sense of it helping us immediately um, save some time with what we're up to. You know, we're a new company, you know, that, um, you know, our, our product is, you know, the studies and anything that we've done with it um, has just come come back exponentially well, you know, um, uh, with the different issues that are occurring out in um, Oregon uh, with the aspergillus, you know, um, you know, things of that nature. We had already had studies conducted um, and didn't realize. So this is all just kind of falling on our lap that we're able to offer an organic solution to these problems that there doesn't seem to be a solution to. Um, and talking about beyond safe products, um, we have two different um, formulas. The, the formula that we're most focused on right now is the um, agriculture uh, part of it, um, in which we have a foliar spray that when you do a light misting on your plants, it doesn't matter the plant, uh, cannabis just happens to fall right in line with this. Um, we are opening up the stomata of the plant, which is how CO2 uptake occurs. And in doing so, it increases the internal bricks count of the plant. And uh, we've had studies done with that as well. And we have some current ones occurring in Oregon right now. When that internal bricks count is increased, it boosts the immune system of the plant. And um, it also seems to be pretty important that sugar level when it comes to different things trying to feed off of the plant because they cannot take that sugar, you know, and with it increasing like that, um, bugs are deciding to go to a different plant. You know, it's not a pesticide. It's just increasing the immune system of the plant. So, and if people um, don't know what BRICS is, they could well, go to ChatGPT and say, explain well, BRICS and explain sure. how it could be beneficial to cannabis. So, there's a lot of different ways you could even use that for sales, collateral, marketing, advertising, um, a lot of ways to throw that in there and make it accessible to the people. Um, in a lot of different ways. Joe, how are you thinking that AI is going to be involved in the cannabis industry down the road? In a lot of ways, I've seen it in cannabis art. I've seen it in a lot of marketing stuff. And I think social media is probably one of the biggest things. You know, a lot of people in cannabis or farmers are really passionate about, about the planet, growing the plant, and don't really care about social media as much as we really have to these days. 
but by using chat GPT, you can use it to really quickly come up with different themes and help using it with other programs to be able to spit you out, like you said, pitch decks, different kind of posts for Instagram and that kind of stuff as well. So I think, I don't think that's going to be slowing down anytime, how people are using it in social media. And I think we're just going to find out more ways that we can apply it into the industry. Yeah. Even how to keep my dogs busy. I know you got a pet squirrel or something like that. And I Six of them. Jesus. So yeah, I'm, I'm just Googling like, how do I keep my pit bull busy? And I, I use it all the time. My business partner gets super annoyed because he's like, I could ask ChatGPT if I wanted an answer from ChatGPT. And I'm like, I give him my response. And I'm like, here's 10 others from ChatGPT. <laughs> He's uh, he's getting his ear full from it. But um, yeah, so there's there's a lot that you can uh, use it for. You guys are going to have to come back to the talking hedge if you want to learn a little bit more. But um, with that, I think we're going to have to roll this one up. So Joe Azevedo, founder of Total Package Copper Bags, where can they find you at? Uh, TotalPackageDistribution.com. And they can find the copper bags there and our uh, Total Package Plant Solutions as well. You can find out more about that on the website. And Jason Webb of Beyond Safe Products, where can they find you? Uh, so we are at beyondsafeproducts.com. Uh, our website has plenty of information um, with a lot of the testing that I spoke about earlier. That, uh, yeah, and check it out. There's lots of information. And um, yeah, thank you. We'll have, we'll have both of you guys' LinkedIn contacts in the show notes in the description. So check that out. Uh, with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, roll share, and subscribe. Up. Or don't. And I'm Thanks out. Thanks so much. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. And check out these other videos that we've got. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Hey everyone, it's Ryan from the Cannabis Connoisseur Podcast. If you're looking for ways to utilize cannabis to keep you healthy, strong, and sharp, come join us every Wednesday where we dive into the best ways to use cannabis to optimize your life. Topics include cannabis and athletics, cannabis for productivity, cannabis for anxiety, cannabis for a healthy immune system, and so much more. If you're a curious connoisseur, this show is for you. So please head over to our page and we're looking forward to seeing you this week. Bye.